Thank you. Um, so like many things in my life, I was jamming enough to walk in just in time. So thank you, that was lovely. Woo! I didn't realize that. Um, it's a pleasure being here, and I wanted to make sure that I spent some of my Saturday uh, supporting this uh, auspicious event, because I believe events like this are truly historic. You are, all of you who are either that part of uh, the effort to normalize the fact that anyone has a right to choose to enter or exit any religion they so choose, and that includes the religion of Islam, not just here in the United Kingdom, but in any country in the world, which by necessity must include my country of origin, Pakistan, and it must include countries such as Iran, and it must include countries such as Saudi Arabia. And so to gather, to make a, a, a point, to uh, show solidarity to those who do not have that right, or to those who come from communities where even though they may have that legal right, they do not have that cultural right to exit any so uh, faith tradition that they so choose. To gather in solidarity for those people is not just a crucially important uh, thing for us to do in this day and age, but is also, I believe, historic. And I believe it is part of the new and nascent zeitgeist that zeitgeist uh, that I describe as the new and assertive liberal, small L liberal, in my case, big L liberal, which didn't really turn out to uh, with too much success, but definitely small L liberal zeitgeist that emphasizes one crucial universal truth. And that is that human rights cut both ways. So it's not just the case that Muslim communities in the United Kingdom and across the world dem demand their rights, and rightly so, not to be interned without charge, not to be profiled, not to be rendered to third countries for torture, uh, and not to be uh, put into Guantanamo Bay for years on end, and not to be droned out of existence. It's not just the case that we have the right as Muslims to... to demand these rights from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but it's also the case that that comes with it certain responsibilities. And those responsibilities mean that equally and without hesitation and without qualification, it's not the case that we even have the right to grant this to anyone. It is their inalienable right in the first place that they equally have the right to choose of their own free mind and conscience to exit from any faith tradition uh, that they please. That shouldn't be too controversial a thing to say, but as we all know, as indicated by the security at the door and by the fact that the venue location wasn't disclosed in advance, that unfortunately in this day and age, it is something rather controversial to say. And it boggles the mind. It really does. And just today on the way here, and some of you may know I'm a rather prolific tweeter, and on the way here, um, I, I, I actually uh, tweeted something, and, and it, was, it was the following. And, and I, will, I will actually explain why I've tweeted this, because it sounds on the face of it rather counterintuitive to what I've just said. And it was the following. Don't call me a British Muslim, in scare quotes that I deliberately used, unless you introduce yourself to me as a British Christian. I'm a citizen like you. And the reason I wrote that is because the rise of identity politics in this day and age is by and large responsible for some of the, uh, the cultural denial of the right for people to exit their, so, uh, their communities as they, as they choose. Identity politics has risen to a point where now it's become the norm for people born and raised in this country of any slight hue to their skin color to introduce themselves if they happen to be from a Middle Eastern or South Asian origin as first and foremost British Muslim. Now the difference between black British, Pakistani British, Bangladeshi British and any other form of ethnic or, or, or citizenship uh, uh, label attached to the label British and British Muslim is the following. Being a black British or being a Pakistani British doesn't come with it inherent to it a value system. British Muslim does. And if that becomes the first and foremost identifier that we're using when introducing ourselves to others and most importantly when being defined as such by the mainstream media, what comes with that label is an entire value system and a whole bunch of assumptions around what that means to be British Muslim. And then, of course, you end up in the debate as to whether you're authentic enough voice. And we all know where that leads. And so I blame, in part, uh, the rise of identity politics 
for some of the stigmatization in those who choose to exit from these labels, or those who choose to define them in their own way, or those who refuse to succumb to the definitions as imposed upon them by their elders. And so it's important that we break apart these identity politics and instead of, instead of trying to bind and bond ourselves on differences, we find values that we share in common. And I would put it to you, uh, t in conclusion, that those values must be the universality of human rights. That cut both ways. But unfortunately, that's being chipped away at, it's being eroded uh, in the name of these identity politics, and it's worth fighting for. And that's why being here uh, uh, on this Saturday afternoon is not just, as I said, an, a crucially important occasion, but also a historic event and representing the new zeitgeist. So I'm here to show you my solidarity and to say that I will, as long as I live, stand in the front lines to defend your rights to identify however you choose and behave however you wish. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.